Good morning and welcome to worship. Uh, we're so glad you're worshiping with us today on this first Sunday after Christmas. Also, um, as we've been studying in our house, it is the third day of Christmas, so you can get out those three French hens as well. Please continue to check your email and for announcements. Our website has the announcements also, and uh, we encourage you to continue to reach out to one another during these times in the church office and um, call us if you need us and Reverend Jeannie and myself as well, um, feel free to reach out to us. Let's hear some more announcements. Hi, Dick Sparrow, it's your old treasurer, Randy, again, thanking you for your continued support in our uh, missions and ministries here at Dick Sparrow Church. I uh, wanted to remind you to keep sending in those checks, or if you'd like to switch to electronic donation, you can email Kathleen at dicksboroumc at gmail.com. And she'll send you one of those forms and we can get you set up. Kathleen and I do it. It's simple, it's easy, and we don't ever forget. So, once again, thank you. You can keep those and um, gifts coming in for the mother and baby baskets that we still have some of those supplies at the bottom that we need. Diapers and wipes and sleepers and onesies. We'll be assembling those all like the first or second week of January. So um, get those donations in. If you have some monetary donations that you wanna send in, um, please uh, send those and just let me know so I can purchase the items. So thank you also so much for your generosity. Will you join with me in our Dixboro vision? Dixboro Church is an inclusive faith community, living and serving through God's love. Let us begin worship with the ringing of our church bell. <laughs> Becky Horvath will be our reader today. This is a reading taken from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light, but the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The word became flesh, and he made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified about him, crying out, this is the one of whom I said, he who comes after me is greater than me because he existed before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. As the law was given through Moses, so grace and truth 
came into being through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. God, the only Son, who is at the Father's side, has made God known. The word of God for the people of God. Let us all say, thanks be to God. This morning, we relight our candles of peace, love, joy, and hope. The season for watching and waiting is over. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. This is the light of the world and the darkness cannot extinguish it. Will you join in singing this first carol? This is a um, a combination of lots of different carols put on by our worldwide I Methodist.
Next, the littles will um, lead us in Noel with he shall reign forevermore.
this morning, I have a special friend who's going to be reading our book for us today. Kelsey Charnetsky agreed to read this story for us. So take it away, Kelsey. Before I start, um, I just wanted to say that sometimes Humphrey is hiding in some of the pictures. So if you guys could help me find him, that would be awesome. Okay, so today we're reading Humphrey's First Christmas. Beloved, most beauteous and exalted king of all should be my name. Instead, they call me Humphrey. This I could bear if the worst thing of all had not happened. My dearest possession, my glorious carpet blanket has been lost along the trail. Now I am never warm and I suffer terribly. This is why I have set into motion a plan to replace my greatest of all treasures. I carefully nudge my nose inside the caravan master's tent. This is followed closely by the chattering of my teeth, thereby letting the master know that I am most enormously cold. Success, he has not pushed me out and I remain hopeful that a new blanket will soon be mine. Three rich caravanners have joined us and there has been talk of kings. Yet these kings bring me no joy for they have tried, tied three huge chests to my bare back. They are so heavy and I'm sure each must be filled with rocks. The other camels are wearing the finest of blankets. They are all comfortable and warm. Not one of them thinks about me, their cousin, in pain and misery, because of the loss of my most precious carpet blanket. I cry out in sorrow. I weep. Today, I continue my plan to regain my treasured blanket. I add loud sniffling to the chattering of teeth and squeeze my entire body inside my master's tent. And as I do so, out rolls my master, for the tent is exactly camel-sized. It is as I planned. As the master chases me away, he tosses me a new blanket. I have success. One more, once more, I am covered with splendor and comfort. I am filled with delight. If it were not for the heavy chests I am forced to carry, I would be almost happy. We have followed one star for many long nights. Now our caravan enters the town of Bethlehem. Its streets and inns are crowded with travelers. My master gives no thought to my tired feet and rumbling belly. I am forced to move on. At last, we reach the end of our journey, but I am confused. There's no great palace, no rich oasis, no palms heavy with fruit. I see only a lowly stable with a family inside. The three kings rejoice and rush forward to bow before the young woman who cradles a baby. Finally, the chests are taken from my back and placed before this tiny child. As each box is opened, I see no stones, only gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In this land, I have walked past many children, but never before have I felt the need to walk toward one. Now I kneel before this baby, shivering in a manger, watching him, watching him gladdens me more than sweet water, fresh hay, or even my wondrous new blanket. I look into the baby's eyes and I am overwhelmed by love. I pull the treasure from my back and lay my gift carefully upon this child. He smiles and my nose and whiskers tingle with joy. I am happy to my toes and even without my blanket, I feel warm. Beloved, most beauteous and exalted king of all should be his name. Instead, they call him Jesus. Thank you, Kelsey. Humphrey is a fun one. I loved all his faces that he likes to make in that book. Well, as we move to our prayer time, I um, would like to call our attention to some of the concerns that we have listed here. And first, uh, as we continue to remember all those who have lost a loved one, um, we add one more family to that. A, um, one of our clergy colleagues, Nick Berlinga, his wife passed on um, last Monday. And so we want to keep him and his family. They have three younger kids. They were actually my in my youth group at Plymouth, um, the kids were. So they are just dealing with the loss of their mother. I've had to add my grandmother back onto our prayer list that unfortunately after she moved back to her room, she had a really bad bed sore. And um, we ask that you keep my family in, our, in your prayers 
as um, we take these next couple days ahead of us um, with her being in hospice. And we also ask you to be with um, Tim Gayhart, who is Tammy Bargo's cousin. His mother um, died earlier in the month as well. And once again, we have the praise that Debbie Roberts' sister, Nancy, and family are on the road to recovery from COVID. I also want to praise that we were able to be together, so many of us, um, whether virtually or um, physically, together with family on Christmas. It was, uh, I hope you had a blessed Christmas celebration. Let's, uh, and remember our homebound members uh, as well during this time. Send them a note. They would love to have a little note from all of us. And um, let's take some moment to be quiet in prayer. Hear this pastoral prayer. It's written by Paul J. Jensen. Lord our God, you have revealed yourself as one who wishes to bring about justice and true peace among people. In a world that looks away from injustice, you cast your eyes on the destitute, the poor and the wronged, you have called us to follow you, to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release for the captives and recovery of sight for the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the time of your blessing. Be present with your church, Lord, as we respond to your call. Open our eyes to the downtrodden Fill us with compassion for the plight of the alien, the refugee, and the immigrant. Lead us into ministries that help orphans and widows. Give us courage to block the paths of the ungodly who exploit the poor. Set us free from pious exercises that prevent us from the true worship you choose, sharing bread with the hungry, sharing homes with the homeless, sharing clothes with the naked, sharing hearts with our own kin. So may your justice roll down like waters, your righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Lead our footsteps to stand with the poor that we might stand with you. Have mercy, O God, scatter the proud, put down the mighty, lift up the lowly, Fill up the hungry and send the rich away empty handed. Let us say together the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite Becky Horvath to read our next scripture lesson. This reading comes from Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 10 through 12. This is what God planned for the climax of all times, to bring all things together in Christ. The things in heaven along with the things on earth. We have also received an inheritance in Christ. We were destined by the plan of God 
who accomplishes everything according to his design. We are called to be an honor to God's glory because we were the first to hope in Christ. The word of God for the people of God. Let us all say thanks be to God. This morning, will you join me in a word of prayer before our message? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you and open our hearts and minds to hear something new. Amen. So I've been thinking a lot about traditions. Traditions or rituals, ones that are a part of our everyday life or ones that maybe we only do at Christmas time or do around a holiday. I also have the song from Fiddler on the Roof um, playing in my head, you know, the tradition, um, as they sing that in there as well, that traditions are a part of our life. Recently, I was watching Olaf's Frozen Adventure with Layla. And if you've never seen that one, it's set after Elsa and Anna, Queen Elsa and Anna, the princess, are reunited are reunited after their long separation of, keep, of them keeping from one another because to hide Elsa's powers that she has. So this is after they've been reunited and it's their first holiday together since they were just little kids. They remembered the Utile, Yuletide bell ringing in the season for the whole kingdom and they decided that what would be really fun to do afterwards is to have this feast and invite the entire kingdom to come into the castle to celebrate the holiday season together. Well, they go and they light the, or they ring the bell. And afterwards, all the families start moving back to their homes. Now Elsa and Anna, they're pretty sad about this because they had you know, prepared this feast and they were excited to share in this tradition, this new tradition with the kingdom. And as they started asking people what they were doing, they said, well, we have our new, tra we have our tradition that we go and we go make candy canes. We go make, um, hang the decorations, hang the uh, greenery around. So they're pretty sad because they just don't, they don't have, they've missed all these years of together and they don't have a tradition. Well, Olaf, who's the snowman who loves to give warm hugs, decides he must find a way to cheer up Elsa and Anna and find them a new tradition. He goes door to door with Sven the reindeer and the sleigh collecting different, um, traditions like the candy canes and a fruit cake and at one point a sauna well unfortunately his his long adventure turns into a little bit of a disaster and the sleigh ends up burning up and falling off a cliff it's kind of like a a frozen movie here right a little bit of adventure in it so Olaf is very sad he feels like he's let Elsa and Anna down so even if Olaf would have been able to get those new traditions to Elsa and Anna, I don't think it would have been the same because it, it wasn't their tradition. I was recently reading a book called The Power of Ritual, Turning Everyday Activities into Soulful Practices. It's by Casper Turkeil. He reminds the reader in this book that when traditions aren't claimed as your own with intention, attention, and repetition, they lose their meaning. Now, this year's traditions probably looked a little different. Some were kept, others might have had to take a break, and some were adapted to new, new ways 
for us here at our house, and one way we adapted was we, um, our grandparents brought gifts to us and then they went home, they got on Zoom and we opened up presents together in front of Zoom so they could still celebrate and have that tradition of gift giving in there as well. Now, when we think about our traditions and ways that we can adapt and be able to figure something new out, I was struck by this quote in the book by Turkel. It says, by composting old rituals to meet our real world needs, we can regrow deeper relationships and speak to our hunger for meaning and depth. To me, this spoke a lot of what we were trying to do this, this Christmas. We tried to reclaim that simplicity of Christmas of and rethinking what it means to be together, but still connected. We connected through our virtual Christmas Eve service yeah, it's not the same as being in the um, sanctuary and singing Silent Night, but we were able to find meaning in that special Christmas Eve service. Well, thinking of how things were different for us, and we never dreamed that we would still be, you know, home at Christmas and not being able to worship in the building together. It made me think of Mary and Joseph. They never dreamed of having to take such a long journey to Bethlehem to be counted. And then I'm sure Mary never thought she would be able or she would be giving birth in a stable with only Joseph there by her side. They also probably never dreamed of meeting other people on that night how others came and were, you know, gave gifts, knelt down and worshiped Jesus. They had gifts that lasted forever. This one tradition of Jesus being born in our lives is one that has been kept going for centuries and centuries. We have kept that spirit of Christmas that hope of Jesus's birth alive. And yeah, we've adapted it, but that spirit of Christmas is still here. I loved in our Ephesians text, it says, this is what God planned for the climax of all times, to bring all things together in Christ, the things in heaven along with the things on earth. We are called to be an honor to God's glory because we were the first to hope in Christ. When we put our hope in Christ, we know that we can overcome things. When we intentionally take time to celebrate and turn our attention to God's greatest gift this time of year, we help keep the spirit and hope of Jesus alive now and every day. We connect with others who have the same passion as well. That's why we gather on Christmas Eve. Though each year, I think Christmas adapts to our modern and real world needs. Christmas adapts the first time you're a parent and you see Christmas through the eyes of a child. Or maybe it's the first time after all your children have moved away and started their own families. Or maybe it's the first one after a loved one dies. Or it's living through a, a global pandemic. But that same hope of Jesus' birth why the shepherds came and knelt down before Jesus and the angels sang about his, um, his birth, that is the same hope that say, stays alive within us. Through, even through our real world needs. And I really think 
that God says that that is good and that is beautiful. How we adapt and connect and change and but keep that same message is just beautiful. So to go back to our Elsa and Anna story, once they connected to trying to figure out, all right, everyone has their tradition, what are we going to do? Their modern day worlds, um, world needs, they were able to figure out their tradition as they um, thought more about it. Their tradition was Olaf, a snowman that gave warm hugs that they played with as a children. And then he was the connecting piece through all that time that they were sell that they were separated. Some of you might know the song, do you wanna build a snowman? Right, that was the song that kept them connected through their years apart. Sometimes our own traditions and rituals can be staring right at us, just like Olaf was staring right at them. They are things we do every day. So what would it look like to put a little bit more intention, attention, and repetition to them? I've thought a lot about this over the last little bit, and I guess you could almost say thanks to the global pandemic that we've been able to put these more into practice, is that we've embraced a Saturday night movie as a family. We make it a special time. We also embraced reading chapter books together before bed. We are also having regular dinner around the table each night or most nights at least. So my question to you is, is there a new tradition you could start this year? What are you already doing that you can put some more intention and attention and repetition to and make it a special tradition for your family? What might, have, what might you have done this Christmas that could be a start of a new tradition every year. Yesterday, we went over to my parents' house and we had a very fun snowy adventure back at the pond. We were sledding down the banks into the pond, but there wasn't any water there. Then that it is all really low right now. So we we're just going into the mud, right? With a little bit of snow on top. But we had fun. We went into the woods and we were following deer tracks and we had hot chocolate by a big campfire that we had to keep us warm. We had toboggan rides on the back of being pulled by my dad's tractor. It was a beautiful way of just being able to connect more so than I think that we could have connected if we were just inside playing with the toys that we had. We were able to reconnect with nature and with one another. So I really hope that this might be a start of a new tradition that we have. These traditions connect us and bring us together. Just like the tradition of, of Christmas brings us all together, whether we're virtual or present together. The spirit of Christmas dwells in our hearts and minds and lights the world around us. Where will you take this light of the world? Where are the dark places in our world that needs a little bit more light? Who in your life needs a little more light right now? What new tradition could you start with those around you to make the world a little brighter? Amen. After we join in singing, Sing We Now of Christmas, I invite you to share a special ornament, one of your favorites. Um, this can be anyone who wants to share. Just raise your hand. You can do it virtually or you can do it you know, just by holding your hand up. We will try to get through as many people as we can. Um, but as we sing the song, think about it. And I will ask you to unmute when the time um, comes. So let us sing together. <laughs> Oh, mm -hmm. 
your flocks at rest. Journey forth to Bethlehem, find the child so blessed. Sing we Noel, the King is born Noel. Sing we now of Christmas, sing we now Noel. Pastor Jeannie, we do thank you for running the slides. Um, um, once, uh, can see if everyone better? Let's go to gallery. I know that Kathleen was going to share. Kathleen, would you be willing to share here first? Of course. Thank you. All right. So uh, this is an ornament that I made when I was in preschool and it was never really a big deal to me. I'd put it on a tree every year and it has my name written tiny right there, Kathleen. Um, but then last year there was a craft at James's school and they made a reindeer. And now it's so super special to me that I have my preschool reindeer and we have James's preschool reindeer. And in a couple years, we'll have William's preschool reindeer, and they'll just be a little reindeer family. So these are my favorite ornaments that, like, on their own are just like silly crafts, but like they mean a lot to us. So yay! Thank you. They're not silly. They are fun. Um, I also, Becky, do you want to share as well? Okay, I don't have a special ornament, but my granddaughter is Angela and my grandson is Nicholas. So when I went traveling, I would try to find angels and, and St. Nicholas uh, ornaments for the kids. So I did that over probably about 20 years, um, getting those for them. And that's special for me. Yeah. Pastor Jeannie, would you like to share yours? When Reverend Mary said she was going to do this, I'm thinking, and she said, you have to pick your favorite ornament. I'm like, how do you pick? Every one of them is special. And then she's like, well, pick a special one. Well, they're all special from the ones that we made when I was a child, the ones TJ made as a child, um, the ones that parishioners have given me throughout the years. Uh, ones that my aunt and aunt has given me, the ones that um, my brother and sister-in-law have given me. And so I'm thinking, how do I pick? So I chose two ornaments to share. One is this one. This is uh, baby's first Christmas. And uh, what a blessing it was when TJ joined my life. Um, God gave him to me. And so each year, all of my ornaments, as I put them on the tree, I remember how I got them and where they came from. I even have ornaments of my previous dog pictures um, of my dog because he was so special. Um, and then I have this one that I wanted to share and it is our first Christmas together. And it says, Mr. and Mrs. Um, has such a nice ring to it. And so each year, you know, we've been married three years now. Our anniversary was the 23rd of December. And so it is um, special because, well, because I married Harvey, but also because uh, I never thought I would get married. And um, 
I'd kind of given up on it. So again, God brought someone special into my life. And so that's why I share these two ornaments today. Thank you. I think Autumn is also ready to share. Can you show it? Show your ornament? Who's on that ornament? Well, and Penny. Her aunt and uncle from when they got married and she loves it. That is very special. Thank you for sharing, Autumn. Did Corbin have one too? You want to share yours, Corbin? You gotta hurry. Donuts. <laughs> I have a donut. Ooh. Ooh, why is it special? It smells good and, I, and it feels good. Smells good and feels good. Smells good and feels good, yes. Thank you so much for sharing, guys. <laughs> And um, Tom Little's mom, Pat, would like to share as well. Hey guys, we're up north. This is my mom. Hi. <laughs> this is Pat. <laughs> my favorite ornament is on the top of the tree. It's a star we had when we were first married, which is would be 62 years ago. And uh, it's just a very special one. It always gets to go up on the top. <laughs> Merry it. Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you as well. Thanks for sharing. Do you, looks like Susan, you would like to share. Go ahead and unmute. Well, we have a very strange looking tree this year and I won't try to describe it, but at <laughs> some point I'm gonna take a picture of it. Um, I like this because it tingles huh. and uh, also because I used to be more of a musician than I am now and it's a treble clef, treble clef. Mm -hmm. and I just, I just like it. That is very fitting for you. As soon as I saw what it was, I was like, oh, that is Susan's heart there, <laughs> music. Thank you for sharing. And it looks like uh, Raleigh would like to share. Go ahead and unmute. Got to unmute first. Sorry. There we go. Can you hear us now? Yes. Good. This is a, a sailboat that we hang on our Christmas tree, and it reminds us of all the summer sailing together on Lake Huron as a family and looking forward to once again sailing. So that's our memory awesome. of summers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you for sharing. Well, thank you. Great idea, Mary. You're welcome. I'm trying to click through here. If Oh, tuck it. So let's go ahead, Janice, and unmute. Un uh, okay. When I was little, my mom had a tradition of always giving me an angel ornament. So this is one that has survived through the years and it's not happy every year. Oh, very neat. Thank you. Bob, did you have one that you wanted to share? Well, uh, I didn't know we were gonna pick out a special ornament. So I thought I'd just bring you a whole bunch from our fireplace <laughs> and just share these with you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ornaments bring us lots of joy. <laughs> Just seeing them. All right. Clicking through here, making sure we haven't missed anyone. Anyone else uh, willing to share? All right. All right, I think we're good. Let's uh, sing, I think our next is a song, yes. Well, going the other way, I think. Yeah, there's the song. This one to me is a good tradition to always, that I always have to sing on uh, 
nearer Christmas here is go tell it on the mountain. It's taking that hope and that spirit of Christmas through us or with us out among into the world. So let's join our voices together in singing, go tell it on the mountain. We'll be singing with the littles. one uh, virtual raised hand. So I'm going to invite Brent and Jane to unmute and share about their favorite. Well, I, I don't know if it's Brent's favorite. He said he doesn't have one, but this is mine. I don't know if you can see it because I can't see it on the screen, but it's um, a glass pear that's got a partridge in it and little pears. Oops. There. There we go. Okay. Anyways, this was, it's a glass pear from Germany that's got a partridge of pears in it. Oops. And my parents brought this back from the World's Fair in 1964. And I remember it hanging on my folks tree and always loved it. And then my mother gave it to me. And um, I think of my parents every time I hang it up at Christmas time. Um, thank you for sharing, Jane. Sorry, I missed that virtual hand being raised there. It's okay. Well, loved ones, may you have a blessed week as we continue to walk these days of Christmas. May you take the Christmas spirit and the hope of Christ with you and share that light with all who you see. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.